It has been a year since I released a self-proclaimed guide called the Noobs PVM Bible, which cover all the important goals that a new player would want to know and eventually do to reach a good foundation to go bossing. And here, my friends, is the sequel, the Bossing Encyclopedia for Noobs featuring the bossing progression ladders. This guy will be more technical because I expect you guys to have graduated from killing sand crabs and completing quests like Monkey Madness. I will try my best to convey a good idea of how to tackle your planning for the actual bossing part. This guide took a ton of time to make, just like the PVM Bible, so if you found this to be incredibly useful, please consider giving me a like, some feedback in the comments, or a subscription for future content, and lastly, maybe recommend it to a friend who might be stuck on the boss planning. If this is your second time here, this video does have timestamps, so do use the timestamps to jump to the section that you need to check. I can help narrow down your decision making by first helping you understand the general difficulty of the bosses. Doing so will help you understand why it makes sense to do them in certain orders based on variables such as what mode you play or if you prefer safer and more chill routes versus a more intense and challenging route or if you prefer to play solo or do things in groups mostly. And finally, if you prefer consistent money versus high risk, high reward which are really applicable to normal accounts. Then you can pick the one that best fits you and use it as a stepping stone to make your own version of the bossing ladder and enjoy your own unique bossing journey. The first section, overview of bosses. Before we get to the bossing ladder section, I will want to spend time to go over most of the typical boss encounters currently in Old School RuneScape. This should be pretty up to date for a long time, I will group the bosses in a few logical categories so that it is easier to remember them. The first group of bosses I'll cover is the beginner bosses, bosses that have pretty simple mechanics and don't require much stats or gear to do. The second group of bosses I will cover is the medium level bosses, bosses where you need to get some decent gear and quest unlocks and learn some mechanics to do them sufficiently. The third group of bosses I'll cover is the high level bosses, the bosses where you need good gear, high level stats, meet several quest requirements and maybe other requirements, and be expected to learn some of the harder mechanics to do them sufficiently. The fourth group of bosses I will cover is the Slayer only bosses, where you have to spend time training Slayer skill to actually kill them, and they tend to be easy to moderately difficult. The fifth group of bosses will be end game bosses that are not raids. These bosses are considered the hardest bosses in the game, where it is ideal to have high level gear and stats to do them, and typically have some of the hardest mechanics and probably the most rewarding bosses out there. The last group of bosses will also be endgame bosses, but they are in the raids category. Raids also have multiple bosses, with all of them having intricate mechanics and requirements which makes it quite a lot more complex than just talking about one standalone boss, so they deserve their own particular section. Unfortunately, these groupings are not 100% perfect because some bosses could easily fit into multiple categories. When it comes to PVMing or bossing in RuneScape, there are nuanced variables that are used to determine how difficult a boss is. So when I cover a boss, I will describe the boss using the most popular variables and give you more context on each variable. For example, a common variable that helps describe how hard a boss is, is prayer flicking. So let's use Jaimo for example. Is Jaimo easy in the context of prayer flicking? Yes, it is, because you do not need to prayer flick at all, you just have to turn on pray melee. Also, I will provide a cheap recommendation setup for each boss, so the variables that I will be using to describe how difficult a boss will be is 1. Unlock difficulty. What are the additional requirements like quests, slayer levels? Number 2. Gear requirement. What types of gear do you need to do this boss realistically? Number 3. Stats. How high your stats needs to be and what the stats required to do the boss comfortably. Number 4. Mechanics. What other mechanics to watch out for when doing the boss? Number 5. Prayer flicking. 
how much per switching or per flicking needed to do the boss. Number six, movement. How much precise moving or how often moving is necessary to do the boss. Number seven, equipment switching. How often do you need to switch to different styles of gear? And number eight, party play. Is the boss solo only or party required? Or is it recommended to do them in groups? I will also talk about the drops of interest for each boss as that is the core reason why you might want to try them in the first place. So there will be one extra variable, rewards, drops of interest for mains and Ironman. Eventually, I will release a supplementary video to complement this video called something like the full fight of every OSS boss where you will see every boss from start to finish. It will also have some annotated tips. This will be super helpful after you've watched this guy learn a bit about the bosses and start planning yourself using one of the bossing ladders that's shown in this guide. So definitely check that out. There'll be a link in the description at some point. Let's talk about the first grouping of bosses, the beginner bosses. So there's four that I put in here, Ober, Real Fighter, Barrels Brothers, and Giant Mole. The first boss is Ober. The unlock difficulty is just getting a giant's key from Hell Giants. For gear, you only need 100k GP or less. You really just need like a air staff or something and enough runes to fire Firebolt and something like Entangle spell will be good enough. For stats, you probably want to be at least 40 magic. If you're mailing, probably at least 50 for like rune armor and a bit higher. And prayer 40 would be nice for prey range. It helps a lot. Ober has a knockback melee attack and a range attack. As for movement, it is recommended to kite the boss because if you're far away from it, it will only range you at times and you can pray range to reduce a lot of damage. And if you entangle or freeze it, then you can step back and just not take any damage. And the rewards are that Ober drops rune items and it's Ober's club, which is decent money for beginners as Aux or Soul to the GE. Next is Brio Fighter. The unlock difficulty is getting a monster key for Moss Giants to kill Brio Fighter once. And for the gear, just 100k is probably good enough. For some rune armor, and maybe a rune scimitar. And for stats, you're looking at 50 melees or range. With range, magic short bow would be ideal. 40 prayer is recommended, so you can pray mage. For mechanics, this boss does summon minions. And you do need to use Secretiers to kill the minions after they are super low HP, like 1 HP. And it will also mage you and it does poison you as well. So praying mage for prayer flicking is ideal. And for movement, there really isn't much moving. Party play, it is solo only. And as for the rewards, Real Fighter's Essence is his main drop, which is used to make the Nature Staff. And that can be sold for millions of GP or for Iron Man for Master Clue Scrolls. And it also drops other decent things like Rune Armor, which can be sold or out for decent money for beginners. Next is the Barrows Brothers. The unlock difficulty is completing Priest in Peril. Now for gear, I do recommend at least a few hundred K so that you can have enough runes to use Ibn's staff and a magic shortbow with rune arrows. As for stats, you're looking at 50 range and 50 magic and at least 43 prayer. As for mechanics, there is quite a lot, but the overall mechanic that will persist the whole time is prayer draining. Whether you're fighting the boss or underground, it will drain your prayer over time. There are also puzzle doors that you'll have to solve, but they're pretty easy. And there is one range brother, one magic brother, and four melee brothers. Each brother has one unique mechanic. The most deadly is probably Darox, as if you don't pray melee and it's low HP, it could hit you for like a 60. Now, prayer flicking, you only need to put your prayer on according to the brother that you fight. And that's it. As for movement, there is not much moving when fighting the brothers, but a lot of moving underground. This boss is solo only, and for the rewards, Barrels drops lots of level 70 gear for all three types of combat, and they are very profitable at this level and they also drop a ton of runes so for iron man you will get a lot of runes and really good armor as well next is the giant mole for a lot of difficulty you technically need a spade and a light source 
And for gear, you do need probably 100 to 500k so that you can wear some decent range gear with a rune crossbow with broad bolts or better. I'd say at least 70 range for some black dehyde. Melee is okay as well if you can buy at least an abyssal dagger or better with at least base 70 melees. And for mechanics, it runs away after 100 HP and it has a melee attack. Pro flicking, none, just pray melee. Movement, you do have to move a lot once it digs. Party play, you can do this in a group, but easily soloable. For rewards, it does drop mole pieces, which gives burst nest, so it is decent money if you do have the Fall Door Art Diary done. Or for Iron Man, it's good for making brews at a later point. Now let's move on to the medium level tier of bosses. We have quite a few in here. Espori, Crazy Archaeologist, Chaos Fanatic, Scorpia, Lizardman Shaman, Skotizo, Sarachnus, King Black Dragon, Dagonoth Kings, Kelphite Queen, and Demonic Gorillas. First boss, Hispori. Unlock difficulty is 65 farming and 60% Hosidious favor. You also need to get a Hispori seed that you get from doing any farming activities so you can find it once per seed. As for the gear, you're probably looking at 100k or a bit more. Or a dragon scimitar if meleeing, or magic shortbow rune arrows if ranging. And for the mechanics, the boss will range and use magic attack. You're looking at the entangle that you need to spam click to free, or else you take damage. And you also have to kill flowers during two transition phases so that you can attack the boss. For prayer flicking, you only need to pray range. For movement, just enough to kill the flowers. For party play, it is solo only. And as for the rewards, this boss drops the Bombless Bucket, which helps a ton with farming as it doubles your compost that you put in. And it is amazing, especially for Iron Man. It also drops special seeds that helps with farming in many different ways. Next is Crazy Archaeologist. Unlock difficulty? None, but it is in the wilderness, so only bring what you're willing to risk. For gear, even 100k will do it. Just need an Ivan Staff. For stats, 50 magic and 40 prayer for prayer range is good enough. For mechanics, you just have to dodge the exploding books when it shouts Ring of Knowledge. It does have a range attack. For prayer flicking, just keep your range prayer up. For movement, just enough to dodge the books. For party play, it can be done with groups, but usually just soloed. For rewards, Maldiction and Odium Shards to make those shields, which are decent money. And Rune Crossbow, which is great to get for early Iron Man. Next is Chaos Fanatic. Same as Crazy Archaeologist, no unlock difficulty, just be prepared to go to the wilderness. For gear, just 100k is good enough for the Rune Crossbow. I recommend 70 range for Black Dehyde and 37 prayer for Prey Mage. Mechanics are just dodge the Magical Floor Explosion and the de-equip magic attack alongside a normal magic attack. For prayer flicking, you just need a prey mage. For movement, you just need to move to dodge the green explosion attack. Party play, usually soloed for rewards. It's the Malediction and Odium shards. And next is Scorpia, part of the trio demi Waldi bosses, the last one. Unlock difficulty, prepare to go to wilderness. Gear, you're looking at 500k to 2 mil because of the Trine of the Seas and maybe an occult necklace. For stats, 75 magic for the trident. As for mechanics, you do want ice burst to freeze the healers when below 100 HP, and you do need a Lord Scorpio away from them. The minions will constantly attack you with range, and you will get poisoned. And for prayer flicking, keep prey range on. Movement, you do need to kite this boss and lure the boss away from the minions. Party play, you can solo it, but bringing a few friends can help a lot, as it is very high level Wildy. And for the rewards, the Malediction and Odium Shard components. Next is Lizardman Shamans. You do need 100% Shazian favor to do this boss. And for gear, you're looking at 300k to 5 mil. Magic Shortbow is bare minimum, but I recommend a Blowpipe, actually. For stats, you're looking at 61 range for the RCB or 75 for the Blowpipe. And for mechanics, you do need to dodge the minions that do explode. And you also... Need to watch out for the jump attack if you are not next to a wall and it will range you and use a melee attack if nearby. Perfect flicking, just prey range. 
For movement, you do need to dodge the minions and the jump attack. Party play, it is almost always soloed, but there is an area that you can do groups. As for rewards, Dragon Warhammer, which is very valuable and tons of alcohols. It is decent overall money and Iron Man will want to grind this guy for the Dragon Warhammer for long term bossing. Next is Skotizo. You have to do a lot of Slayer at the Catacombs for the totem pieces to make a full totem to access this boss once per totem. As for gear, you're looking at 500k to 1 mil. You definitely want an Art Light as that is technically free and one of the best weapons there. At least Black Dehide for top and bottom and decent melee gear for every other piece. And stats, I definitely recommend 75 attack and strength with 43 prayer. And mechanics are there are eye towers that spawn sometimes, which will boost his defense. So kill them with the art light and it will spawn minions. It has a magic and melee attack with inconsistent attack speed. For prayer flicking, you do want to pray melee when it's up close and pray mage when you are far away from it, killing the eyes. Movement, you do need to run a lot to kill the eyes. Party play, solo only, and for rewards, it drops Ancient Shards to power your Art Light, and really good overall drops in Clue Scrolls. Next is Sorachnus. There is no unlock difficulty, but having access to Hosidius House Telly would be nice to get there. As for gear, you're probably looking at at least 1 mil to 5 mil. At least a cudgel, and good armor like Carols, and some melee gear outside of the top and bottom. Stats, you're looking at 70 attack and strength and defense with 43 prayer. Mechanics, this boss will range you when you're far away and it will melee you when you're close. And it will summon melee and mage minions at 66 and 33% health. Prayer flicking, you do need to pray accordingly. And for movement, you do need to move around as it will move a lot. Party play, usually solo but can bring friends. Rewards, Seratinus Cudgel and decent overall drops. Next is King Black Dragon. There is no unlock difficulty, but you do have to run through the wilderness, so don't bring stuff you don't want to risk. As for gear, a range setup of a few hundred K will work with rune crossbow and diamond bolts, and some dehyde, or several mil if you are meleeing with a hosta. As for stats, 80 range will be great, or 80 melees if you're meleeing. King Black Dragon has several attacks, a basic melee attack, a basic fire breath attack, and various typeless fire breath attacks that can freeze you, poison you, or lower your stats. So definitely bring anti-poison and good old anti-fire breath with an anti-fire shield or a better version. As for prayer flicking, you just need to pray melee and there is really no movement. And it is soloable, but you can bring friends. For rewards, it drops Draconic Fistage and Dram Pickaxe with decent overall drops. It is a very good way to get a D pick for Iron Man that wants to avoid constant wildy activity. Next is Dagonoth Kings. Unlock difficulty none, but I recommend finishing Freemic Trials quests. For gear, I recommend at least 10 to 20 mil for a trident, a whip, and a blowpipe, assuming you're doing all three. Good melee gear is a must, like at least barrels top and bottom. For stats, you're looking at 80 attack and strength with 70 defense, 75 magic, 75 range, 43 prayer. But if you're killing Rex only, then you just need at least 50 magic and 43 prayer. For mechanics, Supreme uses range attack, Prime uses magic attack, and Rex melees. Keep in mind, knowing state spots are super important, especially for Rex and Prime. And also, there'll be spinal lip minions that'll attack you frequently. They are all based on your range defense, so higher range will help a lot with blocking their damage. Spinal Lutz will also poison and occasionally drain your prayer, but the higher your range defense, the less likely either will happen. For prayer flicking, you just have to make sure that you are praying according to the boss you're fighting, but if both spawns, then being able to switch between prayers would be really, really ideal, but not recommended for beginners. As for movement, you do have to move between the bosses if you're killing all three. And for equip switching, if you are killing all three, you will need to switch between Quite a bit of different gear, but mostly just weapons and your top and bottom probably. For party play, it is soloable but can be grouped. And rewards are Berserker Ring, Archer's Ring, Sears Ring, Words Ring, Dragon Axe, and a few others. It's extra good money if you do have the Elite Diary done for the noted Dagonoth Bones. And the uniques are really good for Iron Man, especially early on. Next is Calfight Queen. Unlock difficulty is none, but I recommend 
finishing beneath cursed sands for the very powerful and cheap Karis Partisan. For gear, it's probably going to be at least 10 to 20 mil. If you don't have the Partisan, you'll probably need a Bludgeon or a Zarmakian Hosta, and you'll also need a Blowpipe. And for stats, I recommend 80 plus melees, 80 plus range, and at least 70 prayer for piety. For mechanics, the boss has a 100% hit rate on magic and range if you are not praying according to its attack. And it also has two phases. The first phase is weak to melee and the second phase is weak to range. I recommend going under the boss when you are eating to save damage. For prayer flicking, you just need to keep either mage or range on. It does not matter. One is all you need. For equip switching, you will have to switch between melee gear and range gear. For party play, either is fine. For rewards, each chain, grand two-hander, cuffway queen head, and eventually a deep pickaxe that will also be an update for this boss. Good overall drops. And KQ head is needed for the Desert Elite Diary. Iron Man may kill this boss for giant pickaxe and D chain for clue steps additionally. Next is Demonic Gorillas. Unlock difficulty is Monkey Madness 2 Grandmaster Quest. For gear, I recommend at least 10 to 20 mil for a blowpipe and an art light, which is free. If no art light, then whip. For armor, at least black D height or better with melee accessories. For stats, at least 80 range and 80 melees with 43 prayer. For mechanics, you want to dodge the fallen boulders and after you do 50 damage, it will resist you with the correct prayer. And it uses all three attack styles. For prayer flicking, you will have to do quite a lot as they will change attacks after three consecutive zeros done on you. For movement, you just need to dodge the boulders. And this can be done in groups, but it is usually solo. There is a multi-area for groups. For rewards, the biggest one is Zenith Shards and the lesser lackluster Ballista Pieces. The overall drops are really good. This boss is very profitable. And for Iron Man's, you will want to kill them for the Zenith Shards for best of slot jewelry at some point. The next section of bosses is the high level bosses. Commander Zeliana, General Grador, Kirill Susaroth, Kriara, Chaos Elemental, Venonatus, Callisto, Vedion, Tox Talk Jad, aka Fight Caves, Zora, Vorkath, and Corporeal Beast. So the first boss in this list is Commander Zeliana. The unlock difficulty is 70 of Jody. For the gear, we're looking at 10 to 20 mil for at least ideally a dragon crossbow with dragon diamond bolts. And also with the blowpipe slash serp helm assist and with good range gear. For stats, we're looking at 80 plus range and 75 plus defense. For mechanics, there are three minions with three different attack styles. And the boss has a very accurate magic and melee attack if you fight her up close. For prayer flicking, you do not need to prayer flick at all. You can just pray mage. As for movement, you will have to move around a lot to avoid her attacks, so you will run around the room in a circle while cutting her. As for equip switching, there usually isn't much, but at the beginning, I do recommend blowpipe with the sword helm so you can tag the minions and keep them poisoned, and then switch back to your crossbow to kill the boss or your best ranged weapon. Party play, you can either solo or group. And as for rewards, Ceridum and Hilt, Armadale Crossbow, God Sword Shards, it's good money when drops happen, otherwise it's mediocre. And for Iron Man, you will eventually want all of these items. Next is General Grador. Unlock difficulty is 70 strength. As for gear, we're looking at 20 to 30 mil, so you can get yourself at least a Bandos God Sword spec weapon with at least a whip and good melee armor. Or RCB or better crossbow with good range gear if you're ranging. Now for stats, you're looking at 80 plus melees or range of doing a range kiting strategy. And for mechanics, there are three minions with three different attack styles and the boss has a very powerful melee and a pretty strong range attack. I do recommend learning to stall under the boss when you're eating or just to learn how to slow down his attacks and kiting the boss if you are ranging. Now for prayer flicking, you do not need to at all. Just pray melee during the boss and when the minions are up, just pray mage or range. And for movement, a lot if ranging bandos, otherwise not much. And for equip switching, you do not need to switch at all. But I do recommend bringing some mage gear to butt burst or barrage the minions for heals after the boss dies. So you will need to switch into some mage gear. Now for party play, either is fine. As for the rewards, it drops bandos hilt, bandos chestplate, 
Anos Tasses, Banos Boots, and Gods or Shards. Good money when the drops happen, otherwise mediocre. Iron Man will eventually want these items. Bandos Boot is a clue item. Next is Kirill Susaroth. Unlock difficulty, 70 hit points. For gear, you're looking at 20 to 30 mil for the Bandos God Sword special, attack weapon, and an art light, which is basically free. Or RCB or better if you're doing a range method. Stats, 80 plus melees, or range if you're doing the range kind of strategy. And mechanics, three minions with three different attack styles, and the boss has a powerful melee and powerful magic attack. And be wary of his additional melee attack that can drain prayer if Tankan would pray melee on. Good to dance the boss if doing melee, go under the boss every two hits. Prayer flicking is not needed, just keep prayer melee up and pray mage when fighting minions. Now movement, you will be moving a lot if you are ranging, otherwise not much. Equip switching, none unless you are bringing some magic gear to blood burst and barrage the minions. Party play, either is fine. As for rewards, it drops Zamrakian Hilt, Zamrakian Spear, Staff of the Dead, Katsu Shards, good money when the drops happen, otherwise mediocre. Iron Man will eventually want all of these items, especially two Zamrakian Spears. Next is Kriara, unlock difficulty, 70 range. Gear, looking at 20 to 30 mil, so that you can buy a ton of chins, or at least a dragon crossbow or better, and good range gear. Stats, 80 plus defense, 80 plus range, 80 plus magic. Mechanics, three minions with three different attack styles, and the boss has a powerful range and a magic attack. Prayer flicking is not needed, so just pray range basically the whole time. As for movement, not much for beginners. Equip switching, a bit, if you are bringing some magic gear for barraging the minions to heal. Party play either is fine, but bring a friend helps a ton if not iron. Free aura is especially a bit harder than the other three Godwars bosses. As for rewards, it drops the Armadale Hilt, the Armadale Chest Plate, the Chain Skirt, and the Helmet, and Godsword Shards. Great money when the drops happen. Iron Man will eventually want all these items, especially the armor. The helmet is a clue item. Next is Chaos Elemental. There is no unlock difficulty, but it is in the wilderness, at very high level wilderness, so be careful with risk. As for gear, you probably want at least 10 mil for a strong, hard hitting weapon like a Zamrakian Godsword or a Vigor's Mace. Stats 80 plus melees. Its mechanics are the ability to teleport you with one of its attacks. One of its other attacks will de-equip your items if you have open inventory space. So I do recommend something like Summer Pies or Bruise. For prayer flicking, you do not need to prayer flick, you just need to pray mage if it's able to attack you. Movement, you will move a bit. People usually flinch this boss behind a tree or a safe spot if you don't have a good ranged weapon like a Tebow. Equip switching, not much at all, unless you are getting de-equipped a lot. Party play either is fine, it's usually solo though. Rewards, it drops Dragon Pickaxe, a Dragon Two-Handed. For Iron Man, it is one of the more chill options to get a Dragon Pickaxe. Next is Venonatus, pre-update. It will be getting updated soon, so this may not exactly be correct. Unlock difficulty is in the wilderness. For gear, you're looking at 1 to 5 mil. I really do recommend Magic Short Bowl with the Ken strategy. If you don't do that, then... At least bring full Varax to tank and melee this boss. As for stats, 80 plus range or 80 plus melees if you are using melee. This boss has a few type of attacks. It has a basic magic attack and it also has a typeless attack that just does a lot of damage. And it also can drain your prayer and poison you. It's usually safe spotted though, so you can negate most of it. Prayer flicking is not needed, but you do want to pray mage at all times. As for movement, you just need to move enough to set up the safe spot. There really isn't any equip switching. Party play, it is kind of difficult to do this boss as a group, but possible. I don't recommend it. As for rewards, it does drop giant pickaxe and treasus ring and good drops overall. One of the options for Iron Man to get a D pick. Next is Callisto pre-update. Again, it's getting updated soon, so this information may not be accurate. Unlock difficulty, wilderness. As for gear, I recommend 10 to 20 mil so you can get yourself a Vergoras Mace. If not, you want to use Whip or Volvarex. 
Stats, 80 plus melees. Mechanics, type list not back, damage, attack. It has a melee attack as well. All of it can be avoided through proper safe spotting. Don't really need to prayer flake, but do keep prey melee on, especially when you're learning. Movement, enough to set up the safe spot. Not much equip switching. Party play, either is fine. Rewards, it drops Strand Pickaxe, Tyrannical Ring, and good drops overall. Tyrannical Ring is good for Dragon Warhammer specking Corp, but not super important. Next is Vedion pre-update. Things may be slightly out of date soon. Unlock difficulty, Wilderness, Gear, looking at 10 to 20 mil for Vigorous Mace. If not, get a Hosta or a Bludgeon or a Dragon Mace. And Sav Amulet E, because it's really free. Stats, 80 plus melees. Mechanics, it does have an area attack that is a typeless quake attack if you're near it. Also a normal main attack and an electricity area attack that you can move away from. Usually safe spot it though. Prayer flicking is not needed, but I do recommend praying mainly when you are setting up the safe spot. Movement, enough to set up the safe spot. Equip switching, there is none. Party play, soloing is recommended. Rewards, dragon pickaxe. Ring of the Gods and good overall drops. Ring of the Gods is nice to get on an Iron Man, but not super important. Next is Jad. Unlock difficulty, none. But you do need some balls of steel mentality. One of the first true bosses that might make your palms sweaty, arms heavy. Now for gear, you're looking at least 10 mil or more. Or at least a blowpipe. And some decent range gear. Like God Dehyde. Stats. You want at least 80 range and 70 defense. And mechanics, it is a wave system challenge that spans 63 waves. Each wave typically becoming harder until the very end, which is Jad. As for the waves, when the ranger starts showing up and thus beginning the ranger waves, you do want to pray range. And when the major waves start showing up, you will now switch over to prioritizing prey mage. But when the majors are dead, you can then worry about praying range as a secondary. Also, you have to attack the healers to prevent them from healing Jad at half HP. Jad has three attack styles. You only have to worry about really the range of melee one because melee won't touch you unless you're next to it. But both of those attacks can hit, I believe, at least a 98. So make sure you perfectly correctly until Jad, of course. Then you have to follow the Jad's attacks. As for player flicking, you do need to watch out for Jad's feet stomp, which is prey range, and Jad's feet held up, which is prey mage. Movement. Moving is super necessary to trap or kill the minions throughout the ways. Party play. It is solo only. Equip switching. Not needed typically. And the reward is the fire cape. It is the second best melee cape in the game. Next is Zora. You do need a complete regicide quest. And I recommend 76 agility for the fairy ring. So it's a cheap way to get there. As for gear, you're looking at 10 to 20 mil for a trident, a toxic version, blowpipe, good range, and magic gear. For stats, you're looking at 80 magic and range. Mechanics, Zoro has three styles of auto attacks, one range and one magic, and a melee attack that is avoidable. Memorize the four Zoro rotations, melee magic snakelings as minions that will spawn throughout the different rotations. It also has a jab phase which will alternate between range and magic for a while or magic and range depending on the rotation and also three different attack forms representing the three different attack styles green and red form is weak to magic and blue form is weak to range for prayer flicking you do need to actually flick your prayers a bit not just keep one prayer up for the jab phase especially you do need to alternate between prey mage and range correctly and also, every time Zora dives, it will switch to a different form, so you need to be ready to pray switch correctly. Zora will also inflict a super high-level version of poison, which you will either want anti-venom, a serp helm, or a lot of anti-poison or cure me spell. Equip switching, you will be constantly switching between magic and range gear a lot throughout the fight. Party play, it is solo only. Rewards is magic fang. Tanzanite Fang, Serp Helm, Onyx, and good overall drops. This boss is very profitable once consistent for mains, and for Iron Man, these items are super important. Iron Man will also need lots of Zora scales from her to power up their Zora items. 
Next is Vorkath. Unlock difficulty, Dragon Slayer 2 Grandmaster Quest. As for gear, you're looking at 20 to 30 mil for a Bandos Godsword with at least a Hosta and decent melee armor. Or if you're ranging, cheap range options are available with at least Rune Crossbow up, but it is really, really bad compared to melee as far as cheap setups go, so I don't recommend it. And stats, 80 plus melees and 39 magic for Crumble and Dead. As for mechanics, Vorkath has the Rapid Fire Fire Breath attack with poison on the ground, so you must dodge poison and dodge fire breath at the same time. It also has a freeze attack with a homing exploding zombie minion that you must kill with Crumble and Dead. It also has a giant flying fireball that will descend from the sky, which you must dodge. It has three auto styles of attacks it has a fire breath attack that can poison you a fire breath attack that can take off your prayer for prayer flicking you don't really need to prayer flick but you do need to pray accordingly if you're mailing you definitely want to pray mage if you're ranging you most likely will be praying range as for movement you do need to move a lot to avoid the fire spam attack equip switching there really isn't any Party play, it is solo only, and for rewards, it does drop the Vorkath's head to make the Avas Assembler the best range cape in the entire game, and Skeletal Fistage to make a pretty powerful range shield that reduces fire breath damage. Vorkath's head is guaranteed a 50 kill count, so it is very worth getting on an Iron Man early, or any account. Next is Corporeal Beast. Unlock difficulty? There is none. You just need a game's necklace. As for gear, we're probably looking at at least 50 mil or more for a Dragon Warhammer, a Banner's Godsword, and a Samarakan Spear, and good melee accessories. For stats, we're looking at 85 plus melees, and high magic is recommended. Mechanics, there is a core that spawns, and it will eat your HP and give it back to the boss, but you can dodge it, or you can flinch kill it and stop it from spawning. It has three magic attacks, one of them can drain your prayer and stats, and the other one can splash and hit you multiple times. Most people prefer to cheese the boss by specking down its stats to zero, so you can kind of just AFK the boss. As for prayer flicking, you just need to pray magic. As for movement, you do need to move enough to manage the core properly. There really isn't any equip switching for basic core methods. Party play either is fine. As for rewards, it drops Elijah Sigil, Arcane Sigil, Spectral Sigil. Holy Elixir, and other good drops overall. This boss is good profit when a big drop happens, otherwise it is small profit. These shields are technically best in slot, but none of them are so important that you must get it ASAP. So for Iron Man, it is up to you to decide on that. Next session is the Slayer only bosses. These are bosses that can only be done through Slayer tasks and having the right level. They are Grotesque Guardians, Abyssal Sire, Kraken, Serpus, Smoke Devil, and the Hydra. Now, let's begin with Grotesque Guardians. Unlock difficulty is 75 Slayer, Priest and Peril Quest, and the Brittle Key from No More Gargoyles. For gear, I am going to recommend 10 to 20 million for at least a Blowpipe and a Whip with decent range and melee gear. As for stats, I would say 80 range and melee stats as for the mechanics there are two bosses but you can only attack one of them at a time so you must fight dawn first the ranger and then dusk the melee dawn on the first phase can freeze you with an ice attack and on the second phase it can do that on top of shooting out the heal orbs in which you must grab it or it will heal the boss or you have to try to dps it and for dusk it has the knockback charge attack, which you must avoid. It also has falling debris, which you must avoid. It also has the flame pit attack on the last phase, which you must escape from. And they have the synergy lightning attack that happens between each phase, so you have to dodge them. And falling debris. For prayer flicking, you don't really need to prayer flick, but you do want to at least pray range on the last phase. And the previous phases, you may need to pray melee or just dance the boss. For movement, you just need to move enough to dodge the mechanics. As for equip switching, you will definitely have to switch between range and melee gear every time they sub out. As for rewards, it drops the Tourmaline Core, the Granite Hammer, and decent overall drops, so it is decent overall profit. 
for Iron Man, this boss is pretty optional. Next is Abyssal Sire. Unlock difficulty is 85 Slayer and the access to the Fairy Rings is recommended. For gear, we're looking at at least 20 mil. You will want at least Art Light, which is free with Crystal Bowl or Blowpipe and good melee armor. Now for stats, you're looking at 80 plus melees and range and 88 magic for Shadow Barrage. For mechanics, first phase, you must put the boss to sleep using a shadow spell and then kill the vents. After that, you have to watch out for the poison floor that will happen from time to time. And there will be minions that spawn throughout the fight that will range most likely and melee occasionally. There's also the explosion attack on phase three that you have to watch out for. And for prayer flicking, you do want to pray melee on part two and on part three, you want to pray range. And for movement, you do have to move a bit so that you can dodge the poison. For equip switching, you will need to switch from ideally range gear to melee gear after P1 is done. As for rewards, this boss drops Abyssal Bludgeon pieces, the Abyssal Dagger, Abyssal Whip. It is decent, consistent profit overall. For Iron Man, it might be worth getting these items as they are moderately useful, especially if you get lucky. However, there are plenty of similar weapons from other bosses that you can get. Next is Kraken. This boss requires 87 Slayer. For gear, 5 to 10 mil should suffice for a trident and an occult necklace, some dehyde or carols. Now for stats, at least 75 magic. Mechanics, you just need to wake up the boss by attacking the four tentacles and kill the boss. It is incredibly simple. Perfect king. There really isn't any prayer protection needed, but you can put Preserve on if you're using a Bue Heart. No moving, no equip switching. As for rewards, it does drop full Trial of the Seas, the Kraken Tentacle, and it is good consistent profit. But for Iron Man, this boss is fairly optional, as the Trident, which is a really important item for Iron Man, can easily be gone off the normal mob version. Next is Cerberus. You need 91 Slayer to unlock this boss. For gear, I recommend somewhere between 10 to 20 mil. You definitely want Arc Light for this as it is very cheap. If not, get a Zamrakian Hosta or a Bludgeon. And good melee gear. There's also range alternative as well with the Blowpipe, but I think melee is a lot more chill. As for stats, I would say 80 plus melees or 80 plus range if you're ranging. For the mechanics, this boss does have three style auto attacks it also has a special attack that will use all three styles consecutively once the boss goes under 400 hp it can spawn three ghosts with three different attack styles and you have to prayer flick against them or else you will lose 30 hp per prayer flick that you miss and you will also lose 30 prayer no matter what per ghost and also it will shoot lava floor attacks when it is under 200 hp so you do have to move away from them and for movement, you just need to move to dodge the lava floor attack. No equip switching is really needed. As for rewards, this boss drops the primordial crystal, the eternal crystal, and the purgation crystal, and smoldering stone. As for money potential, it is good profit in the long run, especially when you get something like a primordial. As for Iron Man, you want all these crystals as they are major upgrades for best in slot boots. Next is Smoke Devil. This boss requires 93 Slayer. For gear, I recommend 10 to 20 mil for at least a whip and full carols and the rest melee accessories. As for stats, you're looking at 90 plus melees. You'll probably have it by this point. And high magic. As for mechanics, it does a typeless magic based rapid attack. And you can slow it down by going under the boss when you are on cooldown with your weapon and reduce a lot of damage. You don't need a prayer flake, but some people do use redemption method with prayer pots. As for movement, you will move a bit if you are dancing the boss. There really isn't any equip switching. As for rewards, it drops a cult necklace, smoke battle staff, and decent profit regardless if you get the big drops or not, but good profit if you do. And for Iron Man, the necklace is a major upgrade. Finally, there is the Hydra boss requiring 95 Slayer. This boss, I would say, requires at least 10 to 20 mil for at least a blowpipe and decent range gear. As for stats, you're going to definitely want 90 plus range. 
there is quite a few mechanics. Most of it involves luring the boss to different parts of the map to the correct vents. The first phase will lure the boss to the red vents and it will spray poison on the ground. Next phase, you will lure to the green vents at 75%, which the boss can summon electricity in which you have to dodge. And third phase is the blue vent at 50% HP, which it can shoot flame walls in which you do have to dodge or just stop it from moving. At the very end is the last phase at 25%. It will shoot alternating range and magic attack with the occasional poison spray and it will hit really hard. And throughout the entire fight, it will alternate is magic and range attacks. Three hits for the first few phases and last phase is every hit. As for prayer flicking, you will have to constantly switch prayers to block its alternating attacks. And for movement, you do need to move quite a bit to lure the boss and dodge some of those specials. There really isn't any equip switching. As for rewards, it drops the Hydra's Claw, the Hydra Leather, the Brimstone Ring pieces. And it is great consistent profit regardless if you get the big drops or not. Hydra Claw and Leather are massive Iron Man upgrades and the Brimstone Rain is not too bad either. And to the next section, the end game bosses that are not raids. We have the following Corrupted Gauntlet, Bolsani's Nightmare, including Normal Nightmare, Nex, and the Inferno. Let's go to Corrupted Gauntlet. The unlock difficulty for this boss is Song of the Elves Grand Master Quest. As for gear, you don't need anything because it's a minigame encounter and the gear is provided within. Now for stats, you're looking at at least 85 plus melees with either 85 plus magic or 85 plus range or 85 plus magic and range with lower melees. But honestly, 85 plus all three would be nice. As for mechanics, there is a lot. So I won't be able to go too into detail on all of them. That's probably where you should Definitely look up a guide for that, but I will explain the core ones. You must prepare from scratch the gear and supplies to fight the Hunlif within the minigame. In order to make the best weapons for the Hunlif fight, you need to kill the demi bosses, which will drop the tier 3 weapon upgrades. And the demi bosses spawn on the edge of each side in the middle three rooms. And for boss itself, it has dangerous floor tiles that will move around periodically. So you have to stay away from those. And the boss can summon heat seeking tornadoes. Uh, initially, there's only two, but it will progressively get into three or four as the fight goes on. And the boss has alternating magic and range attacks. It will switch every four hits at the start arrow range. The boss also has a special attack that can disable your prayer. And if you run under the boss, there's a chance it will stop you. And the boss also has prayers on. So when you do hit the boss five times with a attack style that it is not blocking, it will switch prayers to block that attack and you will need to switch your weapons. As for prayer flicking, there is a decent amount of prayer flicking in terms of just making sure you turn on the prayer when it's disabled and you also switch the prayers when the boss switches attacks. Now for movement, there is a ton of moving. You'll constantly have to move to dodge the heat seeking tornadoes and the dangerous moving tiles. As for equip switching, you do need to switch between the two weapons that you'll fight the boss with. As for party play, you can only sell this boss. And for rewards, it drops enhanced weapon seed and the crystal armor seeds. It is one of the most consistent money makers out there that is also just very profitable. The seeds are important upgrades for Iron Man. Iron Man ideally wants one enhanced weapon seed for a Farnanin bow and six crystal armor seeds for the full crystal armor set. Next is Fosani's Nightmare. The unlock difficulty is Priest in Peril Quest, but I do recommend getting the Dragon's Medallion. And for gear, you're looking at 50 to 100 mil because you're going to need quite a lot of good gear. At least a bludgeon, at least a trident, and really good melee gear like bandos, and good mage gear like tormented bracelet. As for mechanics, there are far too many, so I won't be able to cover all of them. I do recommend watching a guy for sure. Now, I will talk about the notable ones, of course. 
The most common mechanic that you'll see throughout the fight is the shadow hand pulls that she will dig on the ground and you have to dodge the shadow that shows up. And she will summon the sleepy mushrooms which you cannot touch or else it will drain your run and it will force you to attack really slow and you can only walk for a while which is really bad because she will combo that with the shadow hand pulls. It also has all three auto attack styles so you must constantly be ready to pray accordingly. It will also spawn Hus minions that are ranged in melee so you have to kill them or else you cannot move and it will do damage to you. It has a parasite attack. Occasionally she will swap your prayers meaning if you pray range for example it's actually pray melee so you have to learn to adapt. There's the fly infested quadrant special where you must find the safe quadrant so you don't get hit constantly for like 20. And during each of the phase when it ends you must charge the four pillars four times as there are four phases for that to break a shield and then ultimately the final phase you will have to kill it. After each pillar phase there will be sleepwalkers that will run towards the boss you have to kill them before they reach the boss or you can take up to over 100 plus damage. And also, you have to dodge the shadow pools while the sleepwalkers make it to the boss to heal it. As for movement, you will need to move a lot so that you can charge up the pillars and dodge as many different attacks like the mushrooms and the dash. As for equip switching, you will need to switch between melee and magic gear. Melee for when you're fighting the boss and magic gear when you're charging the pillars. As for party play, the Fosani is solo only. The normal can be done in groups, but Fosani is typically a much more rewarding boss. As for the rewards, it drops the full Inquisitor armor, top bottom the helmet, the Inquisitor mace, the Nightmare orbs, the Elder Charmony and Volatile, and the Nightmare staff. It is good money when the big drops happen. Although for Iron Man, this grind is fairly optional. Although these items are all best in slot, they are not super important. The next boss is the 5th God Wars boss, Nex. Unlock difficulty, 70 HP, 70 strength, 70 range, and 70 agility. As you have to kill all 4 original God Wars bosses for the key pieces. As for gear, we're probably looking at least to 100 to 200 mil because I highly recommend the Osmontan's Fang and an Armadale Crossbow with some decent range hybrid gear such as Karos. As for stats, you definitely want 90 plus melees and range, and high magic is super useful. There are many, many mechanics, so again, I recommend you watch a guy for thorough information. But there are five stages to this fight with different mechanics, and each stage has a different minion except for the last phase. Now, the first phase is the smoke phase, the second phase is the shadow phase, third phase is blood phase. Fourth phase is Ice Phase, and last phase is Zaro's Phase. Some notable mechanics include the Cough mechanic on Phase 1, which will lower your stats and it will spread to other people, so you have to stay away from other people. First phase also has the Dash Attack, and the boss can also pull you next to her. Next is the Shadow Phase. It will summon Shadow Holes on the ground, which you must avoid, and it will also cast Darkness. When this happens, you cannot be next to the boss, or else you will be dealt with constant 20s. So you must avoid it at all costs. Third phase, there is the blood reverse that you have to kill or else it'll heal from the boss. Then there's blood sacrifice, which you must run away from the boss when it inflicts on you or else it'll heal a lot and you'll take a lot of damage. Fourth phase has the ice prison in which your teammates must break you from the ice prison or take massive damage. There's also the ice containment attack that will surround the boss, so you must dodge it when she says contain this. And the last phase is the infamous soul split which the boss will drain your prayer and heal off of you and it can also pray melee so you must switch between melee and range during this phase and for prayer flicking you do want to pray mage for most of the fights except for the shadow phase in which you must pray range on the final phase you want to pray mage if you are not tanking and pray melee if you are or else you'll take a lot of damage as for movement, there is a ton of moving around throughout the entire fight. You must dodge mechanics and you must chase the boss because it does move around a ton. Throughout the fight, you will be switching a lot between range and melee, whether it's minion to boss or just when the boss moves around or switches prayer. But if you're ranging only, then no switching. For party play, only realistically done in groups, guys. 
souls are practically impossible popular french chat though for people getting into next is osrs next ffa and the kodai but the kodai is for people with max gear and they only split and rewards lots of good stuff nahil horn full torva top bottom helmet the ancient hill to make the zaros god sword some right van braces best range gloves in the game great money when drops happen especially if splitting but if you're doing free for all it could take a while to get a big drop full torva and zaros van braces are pretty big upgrades for end game irons and the other drops are also pretty good but not as important and finally we have the inferno the unlock difficulty requires sacrificing a fire cape and this boss requires a ton of patience and a lot of bravery as for gear you're looking at 200 mil plus for full crystal with the bowl of ferdinand and some magic gear as for stats i really do recommend 99 range and 99 magic as for mechanics there's way too much you definitely need a guy for this but i'll explain some of the basics this boss is similar to fight caves where there is a wave system where it will get increasingly harder until zuck at wave 69. there are various minions with special abilities the most notable minions are the jiao ak that checks your prayer and will attack you accordingly and spawns minions after death and each minion has a different attack style the Jiao M Coat is the melee guy that will chase you even if you block it. If you don't kill it on time, it will dig to you. Jiao Zek that spawns previously killed minions and it is the major minion. And there is a Jad Wave and followed by a triple Jad Wave where you will have to fight three Jads at once. So you must be able to block all of their attacks. And lastly, the Suck Wave summons minions periodically up to jad and this phase also has healers involved you must follow the shield or else you will have an incredibly high chance of dying as the boss's max hit is easily over 100. now for prayer flicking you do have to learn a lot of prayer flicking some advanced prayer flicking strategies for the inferno is highly recommended you're gonna have to do more than just simply switching your prayers you have to ideally learn how to time your prayers or certain methods and for movement, you will have to move a lot. You have to move to trap monsters behind pillars, and you also need to move a lot in general as Zuck. For equip switching, you just need mage gear at the start of each wave to clear the nibblers and then put on your range gear for the rest of the fights. As for rewards, there's simply talk cool and of course the inferno cape, which is the best melee cape in the entire game. So it is worth getting in the long run. Now we are reaching the last category of bosses, the end game bosses that are raids. There are three raids. The first one is Chambers of Xerix. The second one is Theater of Blood. And the last one so far to this day is the Tombs of a Musket. As for Chambers of Xerix, the unlock difficulty is none, but I do recommend getting the Xerix Talisman in the long run as you will need a nice way to get there as for gear i highly recommend at least 100 mil or more you want a whip ideally a lance with either bandos god sword or giant warhammer at least a blowpipe rune crossbow combo ideally at least a full crystal armor set with the f bow and toxic trident with full void with all three helmets or full tribrit setup with something like bandos arams and god dehyde now for stats i recommend 90 plus all combat stats and for mechanics there are far too many so definitely resort to looking at a more in-depth guide i will go over the basics though each raid encounter in chambers is very different except for the final boss own will always be the same usually it is one to two skilling rooms and three to five mini bosses and ohm of course is at the very end there are many demi bosses that you will encounter in chambers, such as Ice Demon, Lizardman Shaman, Skeletal Mystics, Guardians, Vespula, Tecton, Fasa Nestereo, Vanguards, and Mudadiles. There are also a bunch of different puzzle rooms like the Crab Room and the Thieving Room. The Ohm has multiple faces. Everything will scale based on how many people in the raid. Each boss in each puzzle room has its own various mechanics. Ohm has a ton of mechanics. Again, 
there's no way I can properly explain chambers to you in this guide. So you definitely need to check out a guide. Now for prayer flicking, you will have to do a ton of that, especially at Ohm. As for movement, you will be moving a ton throughout the entire raid for every single room. As for equip switching, you will need to switch between three different styles of gear throughout the entire raid. And for party play, it is typically recommended to start learning chambers as a group because trying to learn chambers solo for a novice, it's not practical. Now, I do recommend Redo Raids Discord. I will put the link in the description. And this Discord is really good for finding teachers to teach you and people to raid with. As for rewards, Chambers drops the Fable Twisted Bow, the Coda Insignia, the Elder Maul, Ancestral Robes, which consists of the top, bottom, and the hat, Dragon Claws, Dragon Hunter Crossbow, Augury and the Dexterous Prayer Scroll, Twisted Buckler, and Din's Bulwark. It is great money when the drops happens, otherwise it is okay money. Most of these items are major upgrades for Iron Man except the Dins and the Elder Maul. Next is the Theater of Blood. The unlock difficulty is technically none, but I do recommend finishing Taste of Hope for the Dragon's Medallion to get there. As for gear, you're looking at 100 mil or more. Heavy emphasis on melee gear. But you do need a bit of range and magic gear, depending on your rolls later on. You want at least a tentacle whip, a Banos Godsword or a Warhammer, with a blowpipe and a toxic trident, at least full void if a team is willing to take you with that. As for stats, you're looking at 90 plus magic, range, and melees. As for mechanics, far too many, so I totally recommend a guide. This raid is a static layout. So you will face the bosses in the same order every time. First is Maiden, second is Bloat, third is Nilo, fourth is Sodasek, fifth is Sarpus, and Furzik as the last boss. Each boss has a lot of mechanics, and Furzik herself has three phases, each with its own set of mechanics, and arguably the hardest overall part of the fights. Now, per flicking wise, you do need a moderate amount. At first, you will need to adjust your prayers a lot on phase 3. And the Nala Womb, you will have to adjust your prayers accordingly as well. And of course, there's a ton of moving throughout. As for equip switching, you will be moderately switching to high amounts of gear switching depending on your role. When you're learning though, you're most likely going to be sticking to mostly melee gear and doing minimal switching. As for party play, you pretty much have to do this in a group. Solo is virtually impossible, especially for a beginner. World 416 is the free-for-all world, though, that you can use to try your luck. But otherwise, I highly recommend joining a clan or be in a community where people could help you with that. As for rewards, Tob drops Scythe of Vitter, a Fernic Hill, Karazi Rapier, a Sanguinity Staff, and Fogistus Shard, which includes Tob, Bottom, and the Helmet. It is great money when the drops happen, all but just this year are major upgrades for the Iron Man, and just this year is decent. And finally, Tombs of Amuska, the latest raid that has come out. The unlock difficulty requires Beneath Curse Sands quest. I do recommend getting a Ferris Scepter to get here quickly. As for gear, again, you're looking at 100 mil plus. You want at least a Sumerakian Hasta, or a Rapier, or Osmanis Fang, with a Bandos God Sword. Toxic Trident, Blowpipe, or Full Crystal with Farden and Bow. And stats, I recommend 90 plus Magic Range and Melees. And for mechanics, there are far too many. This raid has a semi-static layout in which you can choose the order with which you can fight the first four bosses. They are Kefri, Zebek, Akka, and Baba in no particular order. The final boss is always Warden. Each boss has a puzzle room, and each room has various mechanics with the boss fights. This raid has an adjustable, scalable difficulty called Invocations for the bosses and the raid in general. The higher the Invocation level though, the better the rewards. As for prayer flicking, you will be doing moderate to high amounts depending on your difficulty settings. Rooms like Akka, Zebek, and Warren will make you switch prayers quite a bit. As for movement, there will be a ton of moving around for all the bosses. As for quick switching, you will need to switch between all three styles of combat. As for party play, either is fine. 
Solo tends to be a bit easier unless you are extremely undergeared and you are having players to help you. And as for rewards, it drops the Tumikin Shadow, Full Missouri, the top, bottom, and the mass. While it's Mountain's Fang, Lightbearer, Eladenis Ward, Thread of Eladenis, and the Carrot Jewels, Sun, Breach, and Corruptor. Great money when drops happen. Not bad money, otherwise. All drops are considered major upgrades for Ironman. The thread is very easy to get versus the rest of the drops, so it's pretty worth to try to grind for this thread, as you can do like level 0 TOAs, which is extremely easy compared to the normal. Section 2. The Bossing Ladder Archetypes for Account Progression Remember, I am not here to advocate for an efficient bossing ladder path that encompasses everybody. I believe that the best bossing route is different for everyone as we all have different preferences of what's more fun and what isn't. And sometimes your opinions on certain bosses might change or certain updates happen where you kind of need to be flexible. I will lay out though some of the best generic bossing ladders that should cover standard groups of players. Now that you know how difficult the bosses are generally and how rewarding they are, you are now properly ready to think about your bossing plans. The ultimate goal here is that you can use one of these bossing progression ladders as a reference and build your own route. If you ever get lost, you can always refer back to one of these bossing ladders. So here they are. The first bossing progression ladder route is the normal account consistent money route. The focus is about making money consistently. It's probably going to be the most popular archetype as making money to buy better gear so that you can do stronger and more profitable bosses synergizes really well. So to read this progression ladder properly, here are the instructions. The bosses in the left most column of the ladder are the core bosses of interest. The bosses that are on the right side of the row are of similar difficulty, but of lesser importance for that particular ladder. For example, consistent money route, further away from the left, the less consistent the GP, and the more high risk slash reward it becomes time-wise. And of course, the lower you go, the harder the bosses are, based on a combination of mechanical difficulty, time to unlock, and steeper gear requirements. The next bossing progression route is for normal counts again, but it is team-focused route. This route is all about socializing. For people that are into group iron or are just only really interested in playing RuneScape primarily to socialize, I did not forget about y'all. Secondary focus is GP followed by difficulty. The instruction for this bossing ladder is that the bosses in the left of the ladder are the core bosses of interest. The bosses that are on the right side of the row are of similar difficulty but of lesser importance. For example, further away from the left, the less likely it is to be groupable and profitable or a combination of both. The bosses at the bottom are bosses that are a combination of overall difficulty, time to unlock, and how expensive it is to do those bosses. The third progression ladder is for normal counts except for people that want a bigger challenge. This round focuses on progressively getting to more challenging bosses where money is a second priority. This focuses on improving one's skill of bossing for the thrill seekers that want to chase prestige like cosmetics over money. Instructions The bosses in the left of the column are the core bosses of interest. The bosses on the right side of the row are of similar difficulty but of lesser importance for that particular ladder. For example, further away from the left, the less mechanically challenging it will be or less profitable or a combination. And of course, the lower you go, the harder the bosses are based on a combination of mechanical difficulty, time to unlock, and steeper gear requirements. And the fourth route is for Iron Man. This is the normal slash what I would call the journey route progression ladder. This route focuses on item hunting for future bossing synergy. One of the most common ways to enjoy Iron Man is to work on lower bosses and obtain their unique equipment drops so that you can progress to higher level bosses more effectively. This route will probably be the most fun archetype for Iron Man players as it blends moderate difficulty progression and maximum synergy with item grants for future bossing. This route is focused primarily on reaching 87 Slayer so you can get a Trident and do Zora for the Blowpipe, Toxic, Trident, and Surp Helm, allowing you to do most of the bosses after significantly easier. Here's the instructions on reading this progression ladder. The bosses in the left column of the ladder are the core bosses of interest 
The bosses that are on the right side of the same row are of similar difficulty but of lesser importance for that particular ladder. For example, the further away from the left, the less important slash likely the unique drops are to your primary bossing progression. And of course, the lower you go, the harder the bosses are based on a combination of mechanical difficulty, time to unlock, and steeper gear requirements. And lastly, the Iron Account Challenging Route Bossing Progression Ladder. This route also focuses on item hunting for future bossing synergy, except this time the focus is on a tougher slash riskier, but potentially quicker progression and saving Slayer levels and Slayer bosses for much later. This route is an advanced route for those that feel ambitious and are looking for a greater mechanical challenge earlier on. This route focuses on completing some of the elves' quests to do the gauntlet until full crystal and a fully charged Bow of Ferdinand. This will allow you to do most bosses significantly easier. And the instructions for reading this bossing progression is... The bosses in the left column of the ladder are the core bosses of interest. The bosses that are on the right side of the same row are of similar difficulty, but of lesser importance for that particular ladder. For example, the further away from the left, the less challenging or less important the unique drops are to your primary progression. And of course, the lower you go, the harder the bosses are based on a combination of mechanical difficulty, time to unlock, and steeper gear requirements. Here is section 3, a quick mention on combat achievements. In the bossing ladder challenge routes, I did include some of the general times that you'll probably want to look into doing combat achievements because if you're looking for a challenge, look no further, right? The combat achievement is definitely the best way to challenge yourself in PVMing. So here's some general information. This is basically achievement diaries for those of you that don't know. But the tasks that you need to complete are all PVM based. There are six tiers, Easy, Medium, Hard, Elite, Master, and Grandmaster. Each tier provides decent reward benefits. The rewards in general are not massively game breaking. But if you do find yourself enjoying PVMing a lot and wish to test yourself ability wise at PVMing or improving your skills in PVMing, then check out the combat achievements. I would say most beginners will probably struggle past the hard tier challenges. Beyond that, you are expected to be seasoned PVMer for Elite tier and above. I do have them all covered fairly extensively on my Armbar Progress series. Link in the description if you want to see how some of these combat achievements are. And moving on to Section 4. Of course, I'm going to leave you guys some good old PVM tips before I wrap up this video. There are some really important tips that you should all know that would be incredibly important to bossing in general. The first tips I'll tell you are more objective tips that are more based within the game. And I'll also cover some philosophical tips so that you can train your mind to better handle the grind. Objective tips. You want to do bosses while training Slayer. Oftentimes, you train stats through Slayer and assessing Slayer bosses. But Slayer tasks can be utilized to make bossing easier as you can wear a Slayer Helm which gives you that 15% accuracy to melee, range, and magic when it is imbued. A lot of bosses can also be done through Slayer, even the ones that are not specifically a Slayer boss. Even Wilderness bosses, a good amount of them, can be done through Slayer as well. In the screen, I'll post an infographic of all bosses that you can get through Slayer tasks that you can use. Next is bring a one-click teleport to bossing. If possible, you want to bring a one-click teleport. When learning, it will most likely be less tilting than dying if you can escape. If in the wilderness, I recommend C Pod from MM2 Quest because it can teleport you out at level 30 or under. If you don't have that, a charged glory can do the same thing. An easy to get one click teleport is either a house tablet or an ecto file. Next is imbue Slayer Helm in rings. Imbuing certain items like the Slayer Helm, Berserker Ring will help a lot with bossing and only takes a few hours of Nightmare Zone. You can also imbue them through Soul Wars and the PvP Arena. Next tip is Special Attack Weapons. Special Attack Weapons do help a lot at many higher level bosses, particularly bosses that have defense that can be reduced. It is recommended to bring a defense reduction weapon for them, such as Vorkath. Thanos God Sword and Giant Warhammer are usually the go-tos, but if you're broke, a Bone Dagger is actually still worth bringing. Other good special type weapons are Dragon Claws, Dragon Maze, SGS, DDS, and more. Next is get a Rune Pouch. 
Rune Pouch lets you hold 3 runes and the Divine version one holds 4. When you're experienced enough to try a low level Tombs of Musket for the upgrade, using the Thread of Eladinus drop. Great for pretty much all bossing and general use as well. You can store runes for things like Ancient Magic spells, Arceus spells and more. Next is unlocking all spellbooks. Spellbooks are massively important for most bossing. There's the Ancient Spellbook, Arceus Spellbook, Lunar Spellbook on top of the regular spellbook. You can build an occult altar in your house to switch between the spells books conveniently or having 99 magic cape which lets you to swap five times a day most notable spells that you'll use often during bossing are ice barrage blood barrage vengeance death charge and thralls next is unlocking all the prayers available getting to 77 prayer is really really useful because it will massively speed up bossing when you unlock these prayers Heidi from king's ransom quest augury from arcane prayer scroll and rigor from the dexter's prayer scroll which can be obtained from rates 1 or bought from G. Next is furnishing your player own house. Getting to at least 82 construction to boost for a rejuvenation pool. Fair rings and the occult altar is super helpful for bossing. There are a good amount of bosses where strategies involve going to your house often. To reset your stats between kills like Sire, KQ, Vorkat, strategies are a great example. Next is unlocking gear and rewards from mini games, quests, and diaries that are usually untradeable. Things like Salve Amulet and Dragon Defender are essentially free best and slot items, so definitely work on getting those. Refer to the previous PVM Bible video for a refresher on all those items. Next is learning to use F keys. F keys let you switch to different tabs quickly, like your inventory to prayer and back. Very useful for high level bosses. If you don't like F keys, you can actually remap your F keys to other keys using key remapping on the Runelite client. Or if you have a mouse with like different extra buttons, you can remap it there too. Next is learning some basic prayer flicking. Prayer flicking is an advanced skill set which can result in massive benefits for bossing. There are various techniques of prayer flicking and the most useful and easy one to learn is called the one take prayer flicking where you can keep prayers up and not have it drained by turning your prayers or using the prayer orb option turning it on and off every 0.6 seconds. I won't go in depth as it's not very necessary for general bossing, but good to keep in mind when you are more seasoned and want to push your skills further for harder bossing challenges like combat achievements or other custom challenges. Finally, utilize plugins on RuneLite slash officially recognized clients. It's no secret clients like RuneLite give a ton of quality of life to everything you do in RS, even bossing. Things like tile markers, menu entry swapper, and tile movement indicators can help you learn bossing easier. However, you probably shouldn't over rely on too many plugins as it could ruin your immersion. So only use what you feel like is necessary and don't go overboard. And plus, it's always good to be competent at bossing on your own without having to rely on a client feature. Next, we're going to cover philosophical tips. First is lowering your expectations on quick success. Never assume you're going to learn any bossing content quickly. If that is your expectation, you will probably get angry quickly and perhaps give up quickly too. Taper your expectations. Many bosses take 50 to 100 kills to get comfortable and hundreds and thousands to really say you can master it. Next is watch out for content creator slash veteran player biases. If you are watching a veteran PVMer, chances are many don't remember the perspective of being a noob learning the ropes, so they might say it's easy when you're legit having a rough time at the moment. Remember, they all struggle at one point as well, but they've mostly forgotten that. So don't be frustrated that you're not as good as the veterans. It takes practice for everybody. Next is deaths are part of the learning process. Expect deaths. Every death is one step closer to figuring out the boss. So take it as a learning opportunity rather than a setback. It will help you learn quicker and reduce stress. Next is, it's more about the journey than the destination. RS is a very grindy game, so chances are it might be your first time playing a game that takes hours to do even the simplest things. However, that is what makes it so rewarding compared to other games. You will experience rewards in RS where the satisfaction tends to be far higher than most games if you can tough it out. Most bosses, whether it's learning or getting a big drop, can take many hours. Some may take tens of hours, but it's about the journey, so enjoy the process. And finally, research your bosses. Just like you're doing now by looking at this guide, you should always go through some guides on YouTube, for example, or ask people in communities 
like French chats or Twitch for some advice, but I recommend you research a bit and try out the bosses. Most likely, you'll need some time to digest all the info, so practice and research back and forth is the best for results. And that's about it, guys. I'll leave you guys with some final words. Feel free to share this video or the word version with anybody. And I will try to update this if something big changes that would impact the nature of the guide, of course, in the comments, description, or in the word version. And of course, you can always reach out to me if you need help with more questions regarding this topic. You can find me most likely on my Discord, link in the description, or my Twitch when I'm streaming, or in the comments. And you can also access the French chat at Mr. Iron Bar. And we also have a clan called the Rice Fields that you can apply to as well if you need some help through our community sources. And that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to see what I'm up to on my accounts, definitely subscribe so you can catch up with my progress. Mostly it's going to be Mr. Iron Bar and sometimes it'll be things like leagues or maybe a unique account with a short-term goal. Anyways, have a good rest of the year. See ya.